Hey everybody, time for another video. It's been a little while. And so today I wanted to talk about um, what I've been doing in converting my blog and how I'm using Emacs to help leverage that. Um, I wasn't planning on changing my blog and it's, um, it's still using Hugo. I've been using Hugo for a few years, about four years now. Uh, but what happened is I picked up this device over here. This is a Pinebook Pro. And um, if you do go to my blog, um, and right now I'm running this is, a, um, this is running it locally under development because of what I'll show you in this video. Um, but you'll see that I've got a couple of posts on it. It's a $200 lap, uh, a laptop. Uh, it's ARM-based. It runs Linux. It comes with Manjaro Linux. It's uh, like everything. I think it's all open source. Um, but it's... Um, they're selling this, the, the, uh, the Pine people, the Pine 64 people are selling this at cost to develop the community. Um, and I wanted to look to see if it was good for, um, like for a, a computer science student who didn't have a lot of extra income. And, and it does look pretty good. It's, it's, you know, it's not as fast as a blazing, you know, super modern laptop or desktop. Um, you know, um, and in particular, it takes a while to load things. But once they're loaded, it's, it's pretty good. You know, I built Emacs from source. Um, you know, C, C++, Clojure, Java, you know, it, it, um, so far it's running everything that I throw at it, um, but I haven't gotten a VPN working on it yet. But everything else seems to work. And, um, you know, so I do recommend checking it out. It's a really cool project, some interesting looking people. Um, but when I installed Hugo on, on the Pinebrook book, it was a much newer version. So I said, okay, let me upgrade everything. But what happened when I upgraded Hugo across all my devices, um, I realized that it's been so long since I upgraded Hugo that a bunch of things broke. Um, so one of the things that broke were the archives. Um, and in addition to the archives, the videos broke uh, as well and a bunch of other things as well. So for example, um, and, and so I, I thought, okay, let me also... My theme is kind of busy. I don't really use tags and categories much. Let me see about doing a, another simpler theme, uh, you know, changing that out while I'm at it. So, so I, I've been diving down that rabbit hole. And um, so for some of the problems, uh, the archive didn't work. I'm not sure what led to it not working, but I basically had to rewrite the template code for that and deal with that, um, which was a pain because it's been four years since I've looked at Hugo, so I had to kind of relearn everything. Um, the other thing that didn't work, or there are a few things that didn't work, but the next thing I, I found out were the, the videos. Um, and what it turns out is if we look at this video here, this one I, I think I fixed, yeah, I fixed. But if we go to this, yeah, sorry, hit the bad key there, so let me come back. Um, If I look at that, what happened is, what I noticed is, I didn't need this begin export and end export around my, H, my, my iframe. It just worked. I embedded the HTML and it just all worked. Um, but it turned out that, um, yeah, that's no longer the case. Um, now I can't do that. Now I had to put that around everything. And, uh, you know, so that was kind of annoying, uh, particularly because even though all of my videos are supposed to be in one folder, they're supposed to be under the post folder, um, I accidentally put some of them in the posts with an S folder. And so I had to kind of, you know, like I've got 72 of them and now I've got to deal with editing 72 files and changing just a couple lines in each. Um, and that was a pain, but fortunately, Emacs to the rescue, um, Emacs has some nice integrations and in particularly, um, I did this using the RG package, RIP for RIP grep. So I installed RIP grep on my machine and then this RG package uh, took care of business. And so another place where this was an issue was also with Twitter. Um, and I think there are also code block issues, but I'll deal with those later. And so Twitter had a similar deal. So here, you know, I've got this block quote, but the problem is um, if I go to... Uh, that's uh, pro version or ed version, um, you'll notice here that, again, I don't have that begin and end HTML. If I change this, if I do begin export HTML and down here I do a um, end export and I save that, then it works fine. 
Um, so let me just undo this for the time being, though, just to you know, get back to the state. Um, and these can certainly be in a bunch of different folders. And well, how do we deal with this? So, so this is what I ended up doing, or I'm going to do now live. Um, so the first thing is I'm going to run ripgrep. And what ripgrep does is ripgrep is like grep, but much faster and much more powerful. And there are other alternatives to it, like um, Silver Searcher is another one. And... Um, yeah, there are others as well, but um, but we'll, we'll, we'll stick with rip grep. So we'll run rip grep, and we're going to look for everything that says Twitter tweet, because um, I noticed that it's this block quote Twitter tweet is what I was looking for, and I'm going to look for this in all the org files, and I'm going to look at this in everything under the content folder, and so if we look here, these are all of them. So these are all the occurrences of this Twitter tweet. Now, so what I want to do is, um, and notice that when I'm moving to them in the upper window, I'm actually, I'm seeing all of them in this one buffer, this rip rep buffer, but the bottom window you'll see is actually going to it in, in the full, it's regular buffer. Um, I'm just going to go to the upper window here. And what I want to do is I want to, what, what I want to do is I want to change all of these. And Emacs lets us do this because we can enter into a mode um, the it's w grep edit mode which i can do by hitting e which lets me edit the files in this buffer in this rip rep buffer but when i save them it's going to be saved in all of the individual buffers so for example um you know we got this one here this pro and education version and um post uh let's just grab this one here um localhost 1 through 1 3 did I spell it right um, oh you gotta get rid of the org should be right um, fall 2018 high school For, okay, I don't know. I, I'll find it via the archive. Uh, let's just go localhost 1313. Let's bring that to here. I'll, I'll find a few others to look at. Um, but anyway, so we want to do that for all of these, but there's a little bit of a danger here. The danger is um, what I've got to do is I've got to edit this buffer, this rip grep buffer, and I can do that if I hit E, I, the change will actually take place in the original buffers. Or, or CS teacher eval is a good one. So let's do. Um, Let's change this one here. CS teacher eval. Why is it not finding it? Oh, that one's under posts. There we go. And so, so this you know, is two examples of it. But what I have to do is I have to, like here, I have to edit, I have to put, begin the HTML export before it but I have to put the end after this script tag, this closed script tag you'll see over here, but I don't have this in the buffer here. So I've got to get more into this rip rep buffer. So I'm going to do M to bring up the menu and I'm going to add some context. So I'll make the context five. Um, so what the context option for rip rep does is say how many lines before and after do I want? And then I'm going to run G uh, we can look here, G reruns the search. And so now you'll see I'm getting a whole lot more lines. Um, but even here, what we're gonna find is there are gonna be some instances where I don't think I get the end of the script. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make my context, gotta type it right, let me just, M dash con, eh, M dash con, not typing today. Do a search again. Okay, M dash C for context. And we're going to make it 15. And now we're going to rerun it. And so now we've got a whole bunch of context around it. So this should work. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to edit in here. And we're going to basically make a macro. So I will start by first going into edit mode, which is E, and you'll see in the bottom in my mode line, it's, or not in my uh, mini buffer, it says control XS, control S, 
control, yeah, access to save it, but I can always abort this. Let's do F3 to start a macro. And so we're going to do an I search forward. And I always make sure to do I search forward. I, I unbound this because my control S is to swiper. Um, so I always have to type in this command. I've never rebound it because only, I only use it for macros. But don't do forward symbol, do forward. And we're going to look for, let's make sure, you know, I got a whole, whole thing. And let's back up. Begin export HTML. Now here's an important thing. I use my control N and P for this, and not the arrow keys. For some reason in this mode, the arrow keys get wonky. Maybe it has to do with the context I had, you know, the, that dash C in amount, but just be a little careful with that. Hit enter. So now we're going to do an I search forward and we're going to look for the first occurrence of script. Hit enter, come to the end of it, and we will add an and export HTML and we will then well we don't really need the enter but now we're going to end the macro with F4 and now let's go to the next occurrence so I'm going to scan down for this just because I want to make sure it works manually and so I'm just going to do F4 bang that one looks converted I will scan down again um, and I'm just going to do this a couple times but then I'm just going to run through it and I'm just going to run through the rest of these and hope they work. Um, now, the nice thing is this is all on GitHub, so I can always check things out. And, yeah, I, I could just do this with, um, I could just do it with um, an argument to do it multiple times, but we're almost done. That one still looks good. Oh, and it's finished. We're done. Okay. So now I'm going to save it. And it says, do you want to change this? The too many. Uh, apply the changes with non-confirmation. Yes. And it made 83 changes. And now, bang, this is now correct. Uh, if we go back to this one over, uh, where is it over here? This one is now correct. So what I was able to do is I was able to gather all the things I wanted to edit in one buffer, edit that one buffer, make a macro, apply it to everything, and make all those changes at once. And so like um, if we go to the archives, I forget, well, well, actually, let's look at some of the other buffers. The buffers are still up. So, uh, so it looks like, for example, uh, What is it here? Um, do it first. That's under post do it first. So that'll be post do it first. And this one, and, and, and there we have it. Um, so really powerful thing. Uh, what I'm really curious is if you use Atom or some other editor, um, what's the equivalent? Is there equivalent of this? Because I've never seen this elsewhere. And, you know, it doesn't come up often but if i had to do this manually by just going to find in every file and edit it, this would have taken forever um and here it just took a couple of minutes to do which is awesome the only thing i have left to do i think for the conversion i'll push this all up to github in a minute uh, is deal with the text the syntax highlighting because i think that also changed a little bit um but that's pretty much it so yeah that's it for today uh, check out rip rep and the rg mode for emacs and uh you know uh can save you a lot of time okay so enjoy